Hello everyone, my name is Will and today I'm going to show you how to scan color positive slide film on ViewScan. Just a heads up on what tools I'm using. I'm running ViewScan version 9.6.44 on Windows 10 with the Prime Film XA Super Edition dedicated 35mm scanner. Whatever scanner or ViewScan version you use shouldn't be a big deal. All the important steps I show you today should be the same. The slide film I'm scanning is in strip form so I can batch scan it. I recommend keeping it that way if you want to scan a lot of film and you have a batch scanner. Slide film is also known as color positive film. So first, you're going to want to plug your scanner in, turn it on, and open up ViewScan. As you probably already know, it helps to clean your film off before scanning with a microfiber cloth or something of that nature, or even better, to keep the, the film clean from the jump. I'm lazy about it, I don't even try, and my images turn out just fine, so don't sweat it. So first, you want to adjust your settings in ViewScan. Here are my settings, you can pause and copy them over if you want. Most of them aren't extremely important, but these few are. Okay, so for options, you want to be in professional mode, task, scan to file, pick your scanner. This is my scanner, the Prime Film XAS. Mode is 35 millimeter film. Media is image. You can do slide film too, or image. I've gotten the same results with both. I do 48 bit RBG. I, I batch scan, so I scan to list. If your scanner can do this, I would recommend doing it. it. Saves you a lot of time. But if you can't, just scan film how you know how to scan with your scanner. For scan resolution, I do 5000 DPI because I know my scanner can do that quality. Make sure you do research on your own. I leave all this stuff alone. All these other settings, you want to keep them as they were. And if they weren't, put them like they are on mine. The most important thing is to pick a default folder. So you click the at button and you pick where you want to have a folder that your scans will go to. Because if you don't pick this, your scan files won't get put anywhere and they'll just disappear. So I set up my folder, make sure that's in there and you know where it is and you can move on to the next panel. For crop, I do maximum because my scanner scans 35 millimeter sized film. Filter for the infrared clean, I do medium because I heard high can lower your quality of image. Color balance none, output. Um, here's where you can set your file type. So I found that scanning to raw DNG files worked best for me. It was easiest for me to edit the DNG files into a realistic image. DNGs are also what I use when scanning negatives, so it keeps my workflow simple. Any file type is workable though. If you did JPEGs, edit them wherever you want or just use them how they are. So my scanner is not actually plugged in right now because I finished scanning all my film, but that's what you do. You just click scan and you would let it run. If you did DNG files or TIFFs, we're going to take them over to Lightroom. They can't be viewed on most devices, so we edit them and export them as JPEGs down the road. If you don't have Lightroom, there are many alternatives, but I'd recommend to become a pirate and find some software somewhere. When I edit film photos, I aim for a true-to-life look. I don't fuss with it too much. I try and get it looking like I remember it looking when I took the photo. People have all sorts of beef with editing film scans, but the way I see it, Editing scans is simply the digital counterpart to crafting an image in a darkroom. Depending on how you developed, shot, and preserved your film, your images will need different adjustments. Newer slide film, like this film here, will, won't need as much editing because the colors are more accurate. Very expired film, like this here, will need a lot more. With slide film, expired film will have a pink or red hue and it might be underexposed. Okay, so you're going to want to open up Lightroom. I have Lightroom Classic CC and you're going to want to open up a new catalog or stay in the one you were using if you want. So I date my catalogs by the year and month. Just helps me organize them. And then from here, you're going to click the import button in the bottom left and find that folder you made back in ViewScan where you put your scan files. So here you can see how red the images are because this slide film is really expired. 
So click on an image, find one that you want to start working on. I would recommend something that has some sky, some trees, um, or just as an average shot that you took on your roll. Because what we're going to be doing is creating a preset from this, um, from this image and applying it to the rest of the images to get us where we want faster. So this is the image I'm going to work with. You want to move over to the develop panel and start your work. First thing I usually do is work in the white balance section. So like I said, it looked really red, so I'm going to attack that first. Take away all the pink until it starts to look a little normal. And it looks really yellow still, so I took away a lot of yellow. And then I just fine tune the adjustment to something that I think looks as true to life as possible. So for me, this was looking decent. Then I usually move on to the contrast. Start to see what that does for me. The whites are something I use frequently, as well as the blacks. Help me get some detail. So looking at it too, it looks really overexposed. So I turn down the exposure a bit and you see more detail show up. So here flipping back and forth from the original, you can see we've already made a huge difference in just a couple seconds. A much more realistic picture from this really expired slide film. So then what I normally go to is the colors. And I pick out a color that looks a little whack and try and draw it back to something more realistic and something that I think generally looks better. So you see, I see a little green up there in the top of the garage. I tried to adjust it a little bit, but it didn't make much of a difference. Also, sometimes I use the dehaze. Um, these old expired photos tend to be hazy just because that's the nature of the film. Um, so I use the dehaze a little bit. It kind of like works as like a contrast sort of clarity function all mixed in one. Um, and just go easy on it because once you use a lot, it'll really degrade the image. So yeah, here, there's jumping back and forth to the original and the new one. We made a lot of progress. So yeah, here we go again. I just dove into it because it looked really overexposed. Um, got the white balance back in order. See, like, really decreasing the exposure makes gives you back the detail in the sky. And I bring back the whites a little bit if it looks a little dark. Still keep some detail in the sky, though. And obviously, the way these images turn out, is going to reflect your personal editing style. I try and go for a pretty neutral look when I'm editing film just because that's how I enjoy it, it looking. And really what I'm aiming to do is just to repair the damage done by age to the film. So like I said earlier, what we're going to do is copy the settings from one edited image. And you can copy these settings you see here. I didn't click everything because like things like crop and um, smaller adjustments I don't want to save for every image because images need different crops and adjustments but the colors and the white balance and the tone settings I apply with the copy function down here in the bottom left corner and then I go to the next image whatever image I want to go to and I hit paste so you see this one here with the trailer after I pasted it made a huge improvement and looks way more lifelike but I still need to do a little bit of adjusting to make it look how I want it to. It looked a little green to me and it looked a little bright. So what I've noticed with doing these two, if I'm doing it for too long, I start to lose my eye and I start making things that I don't think look realistic just because I've been staring at a computer screen for so long. Here again, we're going to hit the paste and already a big improvement looks way more lifelike. The pasting and syncing settings get you a lot closer. Okay, so what you can do is make a selection of photos and have one image included in there that you've done the edit on. So you hold shift and click 
all the images you need or hold control and click all the images you want and then move over to sync and then it'll it'll say synchronize settings and you want to hit synchronize then all the pictures you have selected will get the copy from your original edit and this is just a faster way of copy and pasting the settings from each image and again you want to go through and do adjusting on each photo but you can see the difference that's already been made from the original edit this works because the development on a roll is usually pretty uniform across the roll. The images get the same treatment by the chemicals because all the conditions were the same. Something else you might need to do is rotate all the images. Some cameras take pictures upside down on the film, but it doesn't make a difference. So when you're done with your edit, you're going to want to go to your photo, select the ones that you want or just one at a time, and you right click, go up to export, Pick where you want the photo to be exported to, and then export your image. So I'm gonna go find mine. I put in the slide film demo. And here it is. Looking a lot more lifelike than the original red one. And from there, I can upload that wherever I want it. Google Drive, Amazon Photos, um, put it on a flash drive, send it to your friend in the mail you know so yeah that's how you go from slide film to finish scan if you have any questions let me know in the comments and I'll let you know what I can thanks for joining me I hope you guys all have a good day good luck with your film